I'm gonna always go back to Compton because uh, me making a way out and just leaving, that's that's like punk shit to me. So it's all about better where you where you from first and then better in the world after that. Herzlich willkommen auf hiphop.de, mein Name ist Aria, wir sind in Köln, neben dem wohl nächsten großen Ding aus Compton, so sagt man, Boogie. How you doing, man? Boogie, yeah, I'm good, man. How you doing? Out in Cologne. I just introduced you to them as yeah, possibly the that. next big thing. I recognize the Boogie part in Compton, so yeah. thank you for whatever you said, man. I said possibly the next big thing from oh, that, Compton. That's big, man. I appreciate that. I'm hoping that's the case. I don't want to jinx it. I'm hoping. <laughs> that's what they say, man. I mean... You're kind of different from everybody that already came out of Compton in hip hop history. But let's stick with the fact that you're from Compton first. Uh, I have the feeling right now everything is West Coast and Compton all around hip hop, you know, because mm -hmm. it's straight out of Compton thing. Yeah. Have you already seen the movie? Yeah, I seen it about two or three weeks before it came out. Yeah, so that movie is doing a lot for the city right now. Got a lot of eyes on it, so I love it. I mean, it, it uh, hit like 100, bill, uh, 100 million, not billion, sorry, 100 million uh, yeah. box office yeah, this big. week. That's big. It's big worldwide. You're from Compton. How does it feel to watch the movie and know that it's being seen worldwide from all those people? Yeah, it's super tight. Honestly, when I, uh, when I went into watching the movie, I didn't think it was going to affect me as much as it did because I learned a lot of stuff I didn't know about NWA and all that stuff. So the movie was super dope. And I'm just glad everybody looking at the city right now, man. When I look at the scenes, and some of the scenes were actually shot in the streets of Compton, now 2014, 15, mm -hmm. you were born around the time when the, when the movie plays, 1990, 91, yeah. 89. Uh, is it scary to you? I, mean, I imagine it's kind of scary if you look at the movie and look at the streets now and nothing has changed. Yeah, it's, it's super scary. I was telling my, my homies, like, I feel like the cops was even worse back then as far as how they were so open with their racism and, and yeah, profiling. Yeah. Like now, it's, I feel it's a little more hidden. Like they'll say they pulling you over for driving too fast, but really they just profiling you. Back then in the movie, they like, yeah, come here, nigger. Like it was, it was just super open with it. So it had to be scary for them because it's scary for me now. Yeah. Along with the movie, of course, the new Dre album with the name Compton came out. Uh, ironically, when I listened to the album, all those young people, the young people on the album that were influenced by Dre, Kendrick or mm -hmm. Anderson Park, for example, um, I have the feeling they influenced Dre back on the album because the new Dre record doesn't sound like the traditional Dre record that you would have expected. Yeah. It more sounds like the modern West Coast sound. Do you agree? I do agree, but I think that's just the beauty of music. Like when talented people come together, they vibe off each other, learn from each other. Uh, I feel Dre flow. He just he made it relevant yeah. now in 2015. Who know if that same old flow would have worked, even though it was great. He he upgraded his flow for for the time, so it's super dope what he did. Right. When you when you got like someone from the hood who blows up and becomes a billionaire almost, uh, you sometimes think okay when they drop a new record it's about new stuff it doesn't have anything to do with the hood now you're from the streets and you listen to the album do you have the feeling it still connects to the street it's still you know relevant for the people that hip-hop should be relevant to uh yeah i do i think music is about growth and telling your story as a person like i feel if dre would have made an album telling us about like the street still who knows if we would have connected to it i feel like i connected to the album way way better because he told stuff that he going through and it inspired me to, to to reach that level he said a line like i just bought california like who could say that but dre like you feel me so i think it's dope uh now let's talk about you we talked about kendrick and dre two of the you know, biggest names from Compton. Something that makes you different from all those people and you put the fact out there is that your father at 25, you got a six year old kid. How's it that, you know, have an impact on your motivation and your drive in this business at such a young age? Man, that that kid drives me like nothing else can drive me. Um, before he was born, I didn't think I would ever have something I could connect and love to that, that much. And my kid for sure, for sure is that. Um, as far as being different, I think I just tell my own story and it's just naturally different. I feel a lot of artists get caught up in trying to do what they hear just because like, I mean, Kendrick's super dope, but it's only one Kendrick. So yeah. me trying to copy that, I'm a fail. So I got to just, I took a lot of time like mastering my craft and figure out, figuring out my own flow. So, so now it's just finally starting to come to the light. Of course, having a kid at such young age, six years old, he's somewhere in LA right now and yeah. you're on tour. Um, yeah. Does it make it difficult for you? Of course it makes it difficult, but how, how do you, you know, balance the decision of going on tour, which is obviously very important for your career, and having a kid at home? 
Man, it's it's like super super tough. Uh, the other night I had like super kid withdrawals. Like I was thinking about my kids so much and missing them. I start looking at my Instagram and stuff. His mom wasn't answering her Facetime, so I was getting mad at her. But um, yeah, I just I just tell myself that I'm changing his life for the better. Um, we come from a real bad situation. I'm trying to break the cycle. I don't want him growing up the same way I did. Even though I'm grateful for my humble beginnings, but. I definitely want to break the cycle, and that's that's my main motivation right now. I mean, we're talking about you know the, the trials and tribulations that you have had in your life, and you. I found out a quote that you said. It's, it said, um, "What I've been through and what I got to go through in life, I'm not really scared of anything in the music industry. Honestly, what could be there in the industry that could scare me that I haven't already been through?" Yeah. Talking about you, man, having the regular struggle from a guy from Compton, plus having a young kid, plus the gang affiliation. You still live on a day-to-day -day basis, even though you're a rapper, man. Is that true? Yeah, I'm. I'm still very much like in the same like situation as far as in the streets. Um, I'm never. I'm not gonna try to make it sound like I'm that dude that's out there going on missions, looking for my enemies and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But I'm from a hood, and I will never turn my back on my community. So, um, right now I'm used to it. By now I'm like used to it, knowing I gotta walk the streets and and be careful. Even though now it's kind of like tough. Cause sometimes when, when dudes looking at me, I'm so used to dudes looking at me because we about to like like fight or trip on each other or bang on each other. But now it's like love and I gotta adjust. Yeah, exactly. Know me from music and I gotta learn to adjust. Like he looking at me for a good reason. You ain't gotta be like tripping all the time. Yeah, yeah. Plus, are you sometimes more attentive? Uh, what you say on a record, what might, you know, somebody might catch that on the, on the wrong vibe and come up to you in the streets. Is that something that you think about when you pen down your rhymes? Uh, I try to be careful what I say for my kid. That's probably the only person I, I really like adjust my lyrics for. As far as like somebody in the streets, if they take it a certain way, that's on them. Because I'm never gonna really diss nobody on no yeah. track. If I got an issue with somebody where I'm from, I handle that in the street. Of course, like rap disses is cool and stuff if it's strictly rap. But I haven't really figured that part out how to like talk about somebody that I really, unless I really got a problem with them in real life. So that's how that go. When we heard the news of you getting signed to Endoscope, uh, there goes another Drake connection, by the way. Yeah, huh? When we heard the news, for us, it's uh, for us outsiders, it's like you know another rapper getting signed to another record label. But for you, with that situation, take me through the thought process of you getting the contract or getting to talks about a contract, and then the day that you signed the contract and it got out to the world. How does that feel for a guy like you when the music thing really hits and you're about to, you know, break through finally? Man, it, it touched me by the way I affected the people around me, knowing knowing that I showed them that you could really come from nothing and if you really work hard for it and and, and keep solid people around you, like any I promise you anything is possible if you work at it. So but at the same time I try to stay humble because I know I haven't did shit yet. Like that label deal was a blessing. It it was everything to me, but I got way bigger goals. I'm like until I reach them, I'm not going to do no no you're not going to see no celebrating or stuff like that. I'm just chilling. And you said one thing um you said I'm never going to move away from the gangbang in the streets. I'm trying to change my surroundings. Um even though your next album might just imagine it goes platinum yeah. <laughs> you still yeah. gonna stay in Compton uh as far as staying there I, I don't know if I probably <laughs> gonna stay there forever but I'm not gonna be too far maybe like 30 minutes away at the most but I'm gonna always go back to Compton because uh me making a way out and just leaving that's that's like punk shit to me so yeah. it's all about bettering where you where you from first and then better in the world after that for me that thing tell me if I'm wrong but but you know saying uh I'd rather change my surroundings than to just move away, make my money yeah, and move out of here. Exactly. This is for me, it, it sounds like full circle NWA mindset. You know, it goes back to the times where Cube and Dre and Easy were standing on there and be like, yo, we want to change this shit. We don't want to move out. I think they recently even said, um, we didn't even think our music would get out of Compton. It was yeah. just for those people here to try to change the situation here. It's full circle from there on. Yeah, and it's it just, I just thank God that my music relatable because I honestly only tell my story through Compton eyes and LA eyes, period. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, super, that's crazy that you said that because it is like full circle. Mm. Is it scary when you come out here and, you know, perform these super personal, super actually location-based, Los Angeles-based lyrics and see some guys can, you know, spit the lyrics by heart and learn all those lyrics and can relate to those things? 
Yeah, that's amazing to me. Uh, I was I was told about it before I got here. Like you gonna get there and people gonna know your words, and you probably won't even be able to talk to them after. Yeah. Like they'll probably only know your song in English and then go right back to their language. But oh. to actually see it, it, it's it's next level to me that my music traveled this far. Like a a, a kid from Compton story from a church. Everybody relates to it because everybody go through their different struggles, and I'm just talking about overcoming them. Speaking of the mindset that you know you and Kendrick and I went even back to Eazy and all those people all from Compton have some something in common in this mindset that you know we gotta change something we gotta go out and not just make this money but change something around us. What do you think is so special and so different about Compton that you know gives its people this you know special kind of thing, this special talent that we have so many people game Kendrick, Dre, Eazy that we got all those people. Uh, I don't I honestly can't call it. I think it's just the fact uh the sense of community we get in gangbang and I don't I don't think people really see like how much communities do come together with gangs even though it's not always in a in a good way. I'm not trying to glorify it, but it's just a sense of being one and together. And when I'm away from that, it's lonely. Like I feel like success without people you came up with or without your city, it got to be lonely just to leave yeah. and 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 not be around what you grew up in. So, I don't know. It's interesting. I read that uh, you said, you, you know, don't look at gangbanging only in a negative way, but it's a, it's family for us too. Is that something that you would try to, you know, tell people, uh, look, there's negatives and positives to Bloods and Crips and all yeah. that? Yeah, I definitely feel that. Um, I, gangbanging started off as something positive, even though where it came to now is, is like crazy. It was all about protecting your community at first, a community coming together and protecting it somewhere. Uh, down the line, a lot of stuff changed and it became about communities attacking other communities, yeah. even though we all had the same purpose from jump. So I'm just trying to bring that feeling back to where we don't got to be killing each other. There's really no purpose to kill each other over this community because what is I don't I just don't get it. I, I just really don't get it. So I'm just trying to fix all it and bring positivity back to the city, man. I'm never trying to preach. Don't seem like a preacher because I got my flaws, but something got to change for sure. All right, man. Thank you for your time. I see I you. You, you rock the. Me, man. Thank you. I, I see I you rock the Clippers hat, man. Yeah, <laughs> good like good Clippers, luck, man. Shout out to us this year, man. We finna kill off Chris Paul, man. Let's go. <laughs> I hope so. Thank you for your time, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have fun. Y'all.